a new feature in Revit 2025 is the ability to create sheet collections. So to do this, in the project browser, on the sheets group in here, if I right click, we see we can create a new sheet collection. This creates like a subfolder within the sheets of the project browser, and we can create multiple collections as we see fit. These we can then rename. So for example, in the properties here, if I call this one 20 general arrangement, and this second one here, we can just rename this one to be 90 apartment plans. So the idea being that we can create these collections and we can create them without sheets. So they're there straight away. We could do this in a template to preset all of our different work packages and sheet collections here. And then we can do two things. If I have a view, if we have a sheet, then we can select it. And from the properties here, we can see we have the sheet collection parameter. So we can now just pick from those collections that we've already created, and then that will move into the collection itself. Alternatively, we can multiple select sheets here and then just drag them into the collection as well. And it's quite an easy task now to either drag and drop sheets, existing sheets into or between different collections. Or actually the other alternative we could do is we could right click on the collection here and create a new sheet, which would then get created directly in that collection. And we can see that it takes the next sequential number within the collection as well. So we could also use the project browser search function up here. So all of my views that are part of the apartment plans here, they're part of the 90 series. So I can just search for 90 here and then I can see all of those sheets. So again, I can pick it and just drag them straight into that collection and then clear the search out. Obviously, we can just go through and, and make up collections as and when we need them. So we'll make one more here and we'll name this one to be our 24 foot doors. And again, we can close up the apartment one. So keeping the project browser tidy and then I can find the door drawings just here and then just drag those into that collection as well. So it's a much simpler interface of just being able to drag and drop sheets into collections or just to right click and create a new sheet directly within that collection. It doesn't rely on us having to fill out custom parameters and making sure we've got the right spelling or we haven't put an extra space or something in the name so that we end up with duplicate folders. And I think it's going to be quite a useful feature actually. Just to be aware, if we do have any browser organization set, so at the moment we just have the default show all sheets organization set. If I come and change this, and I've got the sheet prefix one here, so let's just have a quick look at what that is. So selecting the sheet prefix and editing, we can see that this is just going to group according to the first three characters of the sheet number. So if I do apply this, then this will be applied within the actual collections themselves, as well as within the overall project browser for the sheets. So. Any sheets that aren't in a collection will be listed out with the grouping that we've got, but also the sheets within the collections will get subfolders based on their prefixes. These will also be useful for printing as well. So if we come under the file menu here and we'll go and export out some PDFs. And when we're going to select the actual sheets that we want to print now, so let's go into here, uh, we'll make a new one and we'll call this one our GAs. And now looking at the list of sheets and views to select from and on the filter in here, we can see that we have those sheet collections available to us as well. So again, if I uncheck all sheets, I can just grab the general arrangement ones here. And again, that's a nice easy way to go through and select what we need in terms of a print set. Just whilst we're here in Revit 2025, we've got another new feature, which is export in background for PDF export. So with this checked, the actual creation of the PDFs will happen in the background and it won't actually stop Revit from working. So it might take a few seconds just to get it up and running. But from that point on, you can carry on working in Revit and in the background, all of the PDFs will be created. So that's actually a, a really useful new feature that's going to save us a lot of time, meaning we don't have to sit there and watch the PDFs being created. 
Another part of the functionality we can have, um, so looking at the view here, we can see that we've got all of the section markers visible. If I activate this view and go into the visibility graphics here, then we can create a filter now. And this filter will look for the sheet collection parameter of the views that are placed on the sheet. I'll click Edit, New, and we'll create ourselves a new filter here. And we'll name this to be it's not 20 GAs. And then we can have this look for callouts. We can have it look for sections and elevations as well. So there's the elevations. And finally, the sections. And then looking at the rules here. So we're just going to look for the sheet collection parameter. And we're going to say that that does not equal. And then we can see our collections here. So I want views that aren't part of the 20 general arrangement series. And then we'll add that onto our view here. And then we'll just turn off the visibility. So all of the section and elevation markers that aren't part of the 20 GA collection will be hidden. So we'll click OK to close that. And we can see that some of the section markers are now hidden. And the only ones that are visible are the ones that are placed onto a drawing sheet that's part of the 20 general arrangement collection here. So once again, that's going to make it a little bit easier for us to filter out those views based on the sheet collection rather than any other custom parameters. And finally, one other feature to be aware of is that we are able now to have duplicate sheet numbers exist within different collections. So this might cause a little bit of concern. Um, it's something that you have to do quite deliberately. So let me just change the browser folder back to all. So we can see we've got the different collections in the browser here. And if I right click and choose to create a new sheet into one of these collections, and again, it's going to get the next sequential number within that collection. But if I did rename it here, then looking at the sheets above, I've created that 20201. I could 20201 and put the same sheet number in as we have here. And that would be accepted. And within the two collections, we've now got the same sheet number. In certain circumstances, I can see that this can be useful. It's something that you have to deliberately do. However, they can't exist within the same collection. So if I do try and move this sheet into the general arrangement one, we'll get the error message saying that that sheet number is already in use and we just have to cancel and renumber it accordingly. So overall, I think the sheet collections will be a good improvement. Being able to create them in a template file and then just having to create the sheets inside those collections in the projects along with the extra functionality of being able to filter on the collections and also use them to create the print sets will make the sheet collections a useful improvement for Revit 2025.